Carly Ann. And I'm doing a project, uh, possibly without Ken, not sure. Uh, but my struggle is real, so I'm about to tile the backsplash. The problem with that is that I need to move my coffee pot, and it's really too early in the morning to do that. But let's find a place that we can keep it plugged in, keep my coffee hot, and get started with tiling. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken a gel pen, because you don't want to use a Sharpie, and measured half. Go ahead and cut some of my tiles so that I can stagger them as we put them up. So prep is the hardest. Put down a, an old shower curtain to keep stuff off Ken's beautiful countertops and kind of measured everything out, used the laser beam, make sure that things are level. We've got a little bit of give, but uh, we'll be able to keep that straight with the level. Prep's the hardest. Um, time to cut. Let's see what happens here. Scored enough. Ah, and Ken knew I didn't score enough. I did not get through this without Ken's help, by the way. Um, the power kicked my butt, Bobby. I may not be tall enough to do this here. Oh, maybe. Oh, actually, I guess I did, and I just didn't hear it pop. So, I'm going to prepare with some a few tiles, and then we'll be back to start putting it on the wall. Okay, so here we have tile adhesive, and this is really... Um, quick drying good stuff so I've got about 10 minutes to do a section I've prepared I've got my tape measure I've got my spacers for when I get ready for that and I've already cut the tiles so we're going to start putting this on the wall and slapping some tiles on Alright, so we're going to start with these uh, bullnose pieces on the edge and put them in and then push them up to adhere them to the grout, I mean to the adhesive. Then on the second row, in order to offset, we're going to start with this little portion of a tile. Then after you get a few of these up, you're going to want to start putting your spacers in. I'm going to need a laser to go this way until I get this row established. So the, the reason that you want to go ahead and put your spacers and get your lines set after you do a few is that you want to work with this adhesive while it's still wet enough to shift the tiles. It's kind of a work smarter, not harder kind of. Okay, so basically what's happened is the blade that Ken's using to trim out some of these outlet covers and the pot uh, filler has gone dull. So he's going to Lowe's for the second time today. Um, what I'm doing is, uh, you know, I've started putting this down. This, like I said, is quick drying adhesive. And Ken is cutting out leaving enough space for all the screws that go into the outlet and outlet cover, outlet and outlet cover. And you can see that we didn't cut out this little narrow strip here. And that's just simply because the outlet cover is going to cover that. So 
we're just putting it up and spacing them out now. This goes fairly quickly, straight wall. I did uh, determine that the countertop from one side of the stove to the other side of the stove is not quite even. So you'll notice I don't have any space um, spacers here between these tiles. I shortened that grout line just to keep, I used the laser just to kind of keep that straight. So this should go fairly quickly. I put the tile on and I push it up, it just kind of helps that adhesive to catch hold of the back of the tile. And when you're using quick drying uh, adhesive, you certainly only want to do small areas at a time. I did start, of course, started with my side pieces, as you saw. Then I went all the way down the countertop to make sure that I could get this bottom line even, um, the grout line across the bottom. I didn't want to get to the end and have to start angling and shaving tiles. Okay, so got this first wall done. Two trips to Lowe's slowed me down a little bit, but let's continue on over here. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here that I did when I got started there, and that is to score and cut some of these tiles in half. If you don't do that, then you don't have the offset of your grout line. The tiles would just be stacked on top of each other. So we're just gonna score and cut. Okay, I think I'm pushing down too hard on it. You just have to score it and then it breaks, but I think I'm just straight up cutting it. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is the same thing that I did on this wall where I found out that I was a little uneven, even though it's a new build, you know, house settles, wood is wood, and we have these uh, walnut countertops. To see if this counter um, is level, because if it's not, then I need to adjust my grout lines so that as your eyes go up, everything is even. The old fashioned level says everything's level. Let's see what this says. So if you can see that this red line, I don't know if you can see that, is disappearing on me. I have it in the corner there and then it fades away. So that means it is not going to be totally level and that could be, you know, the floor could be giving or, or something. Let me raise it up just a hair more. And you can see that literally it may be like an eighth of an inch off. Yeah, so it's gonna be a little higher on this end. So what I'm gonna do is leave the laser light on because I want to be as close to the countertop as we can and I'm going to adjust my grout lines so that good old caulking will come into play at some point. But I, you know, want to keep those grout lines straight. So that's why it's important. You know, preparation is the hardest part, is to make sure you know what you're working with before you get there. And I'm working with this. Start with this side. Keep the grout lines straight using the laser beam, uh, which is I can't imagine doing this job without it because these walls are not level. Um, Hmm. So you can see there, I'm going to have an even grout line 
starting on that side and go down somewhat and that's not easily adjusted hmm and that's cutting at an angle I'm gonna think about this for a minute okay I've changed my mind about 10 times about how I'm gonna do this and so here's what I'm doing um, decided pretty much to start on this side and work my way back in because that's the finished side and the more I thought about it and looked at it the more I thought that was not a good idea. I was afraid my grout lines would end up too off and I can't at least play with it while I'm going. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna tile all the way up in this corner so that my grout lines are even. And most walls are crooked or slanted or countertops, floors move, walls move. So um, I'm not erasing this. I'm actually gonna show the problem that I'm having. We're in a brand new house, but it's still natural products and settling and all that stuff. Uh, so what, what I'm doing is I'm gonna grout or tile up this corner so that my grout lines will match. And then I'm going to uh, just come across the, the bottom here. So that way I can work with making this lower row of tiles level and keep my grout lines straight and do the adjustments in my grout as I need to so that my tiles don't look like they're off. Wish me luck. Oh my God. Okay, so what I've done is tiled so that the grout lines are even, even starting in the corner there where I just finished on the other wall. Now what I'm gonna do is pull my laser up and see where we're gonna start getting uneven as I go down the rest of this row. So I'm gonna line that up with my grout line. And then as you can see, by the time I get to this end tile, I am going to be off just a hair. It may be off enough that I can just adjust my grout lines. And because I'm doing white grout, and that's one thing, you know, subway tile is so much easier than other tile that I've done because it's white and I'm using white grout, so I can adjust those grout lines accordingly. Um, toyed around with which way I was gonna go, but I think keeping um, the flow from where I started to where I'm gonna end, we'll see. You can tell me at the end. So let's get some. What I'm gonna do here time. is work these bottom two rows simultaneously so that I can adjust that line as much as I go and as I go and see if I can manipulate the grout line in a way that will be okay for not having to cut these tiles as I get to the end at an angle. So as you put the bottom grout up and I'm setting these directly on the countertop and I will use um, caulking to, to seal around the bottom after I've grouted. But keep your spacing the same because if you don't use your spacers even on the sides when you're doing on a flat surface, you're gonna mess up that hitting in the middle with your grout line on the next Let's see what happens with this line. You can see it's starting to get down on the tile. So I've gone from the grout line here to down on the tile. I'm gonna get these put in place and then adjust that second row. There's nothing I can do about the bottom row. Oh my goodness, perfect fit into the corner. How lucky did I just get? I know that bottom row is gonna be off. I'm gonna raise my laser up to the next row and see if I can get a little closer. Right, so we're in the grout line there and we're hitting the top of the tile on this side. So. You have to have some grout line. So it's gonna take three rows for me to get this straightened out. Reason that I'm doing this this way is because this grout is going to, I mean the adhesive is gonna dry. If I've kept going as I normally would by section, if I got down here and needed to manipulate anything, it would be hard to go back with it already dry. And I am hitting on the top of the tile. So I've probably picked up um, a sixteenth of an inch. 
in that grout line. So that's about half the grout because I'm using uh, eighth inch spacers. And I'll do that again on this next row. And then I should be back to even kill. All right, so there we are in the grout line all the way across. So all the way across, if you can see, um, get this to where you can see the whole corner there. So coming off the first wall and all the way across my grout lines match perfectly. All right, super excited about this wall. It's straight. morning okay so the tile has been set for over 24 hours and now it's time to start grouting so I am mixing the grout and I got the ultra color plus FA from Lowe's that has the grout and sealer and everything in it so this should be the last step but I'm kind of funny about sealing tile so I will probably add a sealer at the end anyway. So three to five minutes of stirring. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, the trick with grouting, I've got my floater and Ken actually spent about five minutes mixing the grout for me. Uh, the trick is to go at a diagonal motion so that it fills in the grout line. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a non-intrusive side away from the outlets and all until I get in my groove. I just work better that way. washing the towel and I typically let the grout sit for a few minutes before I do that. I also do that at an angle to help keep the towel pushed into the grout lines. It's usually keep the grout in the grout lines. The sponge is obviously going to get full of kind of sand and grit and that's why you'll see that I'll flip it. I'll use this side and then I'll flip it and use this side. Just kind of keep the grid off the towel and go over it after I've got the sponge full of Okay, so there you have it and uh, slide that way for a second, honey. We got all this towel done and then covered it up with stuff, right? Yeah, but it looks, it looks amazing. <laughs> it really does look good. The, you know, we found I'm a, I'm a good manipulator. You can't tell, honestly, even, no. I mean, I, I have to look for it. But when I look and feel, I can tell that it's about a sixteenth of an inch instead of an eighth, but it got those front really lines really straight does. and it looks really good. Now, the video was like three hours long of the video of doing the, the stuff. Three so, hours to do. <laughs> but we edited it down, so there, there are things that are missing in there. We didn't talk about the caulk afterwards, but all that is is putting a bead of caulk along the the, the countertop the bottom, and yeah. yeah, the bottom of the tile, the countertop. Um, so if you have any questions on what she did or how she did it. Or what he used to cut the towel with. Or what I used to stuff. cut. <laughs> go ahead down below and ask the questions there. It, um, I, I'll put in a link in the description on the on laser that you can get from Amazon. They're pretty cheap. You can get them for 
fifty or a hundred, a hundred bucks. I think oh, was the okay. one, a decent one. It's uh, really, so. it was a lifesaver. We use it all the time and all the projects that we're doing in the, in the new house and uh, all of our barn shelves, barn yeah. shelves and stuff. So yeah. So um, you want to do the? Surely it's not their first time here. If this is the oh, first time you're seeing one of our videos, shame on you. We have our whole entire house filled. Go back. Go back. Go back and watch them all. All yeah. right. Well, if this is your first time here, thank you for coming. Head on down. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button. And if anybody out there could share the videos, it would really help us out. And be sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Journeys with Ken and Leanne. We're moving in and trying to get things settled and ready for one of the grandbabies' first birthdays and our wedding. So sometimes we post every day and sometimes we don't. I guess that means we don't post every day. <laughs> oh, no. We post there a lot, though. <laughs> you can also go see some of the stuff we're doing around here and share some of your ideas over on Farmhouse Journeys on Facebook. Yeah, we've got a private group, so just send us a thing and we'll get you in there. Anybody interested in, we've literally built a new old farmhouse. Starting to feel that way. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoy the journey.